This malware is crazy. It's called ESXi ARGs and it's encrypted the VMs maliciously of 500 hosts in France, Germany, the UK, and the US. In this video, we're doing a malware deep dive. So we're gonna kind of walk through here what's going on. I'm seeing that they're doing something with the config file. They're editing the config to change the VMDK file to a VMDK.swap. So nothing really crazy going on here. They're killing the VMX process. If you kill VMX, your VMs die. So that means they're turning off the VMs before they encrypt. Ah, and here is the meat and potatoes of this malware. So essentially what it's doing is it looks like it's going through every volume in the VMFS volumes directory. It's trying to see if those volumes have any known file extension for a file they'd want to encrypt. So VMDK, VMX, VMXF, swap files, VMM, and VRAM, etc. And then, okay, here's where the evil begins. It's running start encrypt with the size, step, and all this good stuff using this encrypt binary. The reason why I'm looking for this encrypt binary is because I saw this encrypt binary on Malware Bazaar associated with ESXi args. I was trying to figure out how did it get invoked? What did the malware author do to run this script? So we're gonna take a look today at the encrypt binary and see what it's doing on the inside. So let's look at the command line here. We're running the encrypt binary with a public key. Okay, so it's probably some kind of SSH generated public key uh, on the file. So the file is coming from our for loop here for every file in the volumes. And then we're getting some kind of size of the file and then the size of the file in looks like pages so 1024 bytes okay and we pump all that out to dev null and suppress the output to the command line okay so let's let's open up the encrypt binary and see what encrypt is doing so when i start any project where i'm doing malware analysis i kind of do some very basic uh triage of the, of the file to see what's going on to get me to get me an idea of how much work i have to do or what i'm in for uh, so we have two files here. One is encrypt and one is decrypt. So on Malware Bazaar, there are actually two copies of the encrypt file, but one of them did an encryption, one of them did a decryption. Essentially what's happening here is the malware author will leave you the decrypt binary, which depends on a private key that you have to buy from them, right? They say, give me 20 Bitcoin or I won't give you the, the file to decrypt your stuff. So they leave you with this, but no key. So the file we're actually interested in is the encrypt file. This is the ransomware itself that gets ran by the run sh script. So we're gonna do file on this and see what's going on here. So we have a 64-bit elf, that makes sense. ESXi is typically ran on 64-bit Intel processors, nothing going on that's crazy there. Dynamically linked, meaning it was ran with standard GCC, no crazy flags. Uh, for Linux 2.6.8, that's a very old version of Linux to compile to um, with the debug info, not stripped. Okay, so typically, if you were a malware author, you don't want people to reverse engineer your malware. Probably the authors of ESXi args are mad that I'm doing this, but what you would do is you would strip the binary so that there was no information about what the binary did so that a reverse engineer like me couldn't figure out what your binary does. Not only did they not strip the binary, they left it with debug info, which means that all of the functions still have symbols and there's still information from GCC about how this program got compiled. So, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're going to run strings on this as like the next step of our trias to see what we got ourselves into. By looking at the functions here in the strings list, we can kind of see, get an idea for what the binary does just from reading off some strings, right? So we have malloc, mem copy. I'm looking for things that are more related to encryption and decryption. So here we have symbols that come in from OpenSSL. So it's going to read some file as a public key, some file as a private key. It's going to use some kind of pseudo RNG, probably to generate key information for the later encryption. And then we have public encrypt or private decrypt. So that's, if you don't know the difference between asymmetric and symmetric key encryption, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but essentially, looks like we encrypt the thing using the private key. Let's dump this binary into our disassembler, our analyzer, and see what, we, what trouble we can get into. Okay, I wanna say an important caveat real quick. Normally, Ghidra does not look this cursed, okay? But I made the font size like 64 for my mobile users. So if you're a mobile user, or really anybody, just type uh, thank you triple L in the comments. Just just go do it, it's fine, don't worry about it. Like, I, I'm, it's okay, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, we have the binary open here in Ghidra, Ghidra put us into the main function. And again, the only reason I know it's the main function is because the malware author left their symbols and their debug information in the binary. So cool, we're at main. Let's figure out what's going on here. Uh, we get a pretty robust usage screen. So if we were to run this program, but not give it three arguments, uh, we would have the prompt to put in a public key and the path to a file to encrypt. So let's go ahead and rename this bad boy. Name this argc, because that's what it is. 
And we can also rename this uh, parameter. It's going to be renamed argv. And we're going to retype it. We're going to retype it to be a care star star. And then Ghidra will make the, the code look really pretty. Uh, we give it the path to the binary to run, a public key, and then the file to encrypt. And then it does something with that. So let's walk through and see what it's doing. OK, cool. So we get some. <laughs> Very robust information here. Again, Ghidra is cool, but leaving debug symbols in your binary is cooler. Uh, so we run through these functions here, and this is kind of the order of operations for what this ransomware does. And again, we're in the encrypt part of the ransomware. Uh, so we do init lib SSL. Let's see what that bad boy does. Um, let's see here. Ba -ba -bum. We use DL open, which uses the linker to open an elf. So it's opening lib SSL.so. And then it looks like if that fails, okay, so it's, it's trying to find some version of libssl, be it a .so1, a .so6, whatever. It's just looking for any version. And then once it gets through and it eventually finds a valid libssl, it's using dilsim to runtime linking. It's looking for these symbols in a library and then it's putting them into some global structure to call them later. Again, this would be kind of complicated to debug if they didn't leave their symbols in the binary, but they did, so that's fine. And even then, even if they hadn't, we have the strings right here that it's looking for, so we could have easily just renamed this pointer this name, and then there you go. So it's populating this table of function pointers to call later for the binary. And again, kind of like the strings call did before, this gives us a good idea of what the binary is going to do. So it's looking for some function to read in an RSA public key some function to read it an RSA private key. It's going to use an RNG to generate bytes. Let me move my fat head out of the way. All right, cool. And then uh, it's going to do a public encrypt or a private decrypt. So that's that's all we're looking for here. So we're gonna go back and see, now that we've loaded all of these functions into the, into the binary, what do we do with them? So we get PK data. I'm assuming that means we're getting the public key data because again, we're in the encrypt function. And if you're maliciously encrypting, you encrypt with your public key. So what do we do here? We open a file to read. We seek to the end to make sure that the file length is not zero. Okay. And again, it would throw an error if your file key is zero. Pretty sweet. Um, we malloc that many bytes plus one. We read from that file into this buffer and then we return. So essentially all we're doing here is we're reading a public key into this buffer. So we can rename this PK buff. There we go. So then now we're creating an RSA object using PK buff and something else. So it's probably take text data in from PK buff and then output a pointer to an RSA object. So we're going to go ahead and read this real quick. Um, yep. So it creates a new basic in and out memory buffer, which is an open SSL concept. And then we read from that basic in and out buffer, which is the data from our file our key file and we create a public key object, and then we output that to param2. And then there we go. Okay, awesome. So now we have our key object, our key information to do some kind of RSA encryption. So we're gonna say RSA key object. And then we're kind of getting close to the end here. So now all we have to do is do encrypt file. And I'm assuming that, yep, so again, argv2 contains the file we're going to encrypt. We have our RSA key object and then some other variables. We're not sure what they do yet. So let's go ahead and open up the encrypt file function. So we open a file to read, write. This is our target file. It's the file we want to encrypt the thing we're maliciously we're holding for ransom. And then we get generate a stream key. Interesting. So this is probably our um, symmetric key buffer. Now we're going to RSA encrypt RSA object. So essentially what it looks like we're doing is we are creating a symmetric key. Because again, if you're seeing this hex 20, any multiple of 16 or 128 bits is going to be a symmetric uh, stream key. So we are encrypting that symmetric key. And then we're using it to encrypt the file. Okay. So essentially what's happening here is we are generating a stream key to use for symmetric encryption. We're going to encrypt that symmetric key with an asymmetric key. So that's our RSA public key. And then we're going to encrypt that VMDK, which is the thing we're holding ransom. And then it looks like we are slapping that encrypted key onto the end of the file. And then that's it. So that's all the ransomware does. So it, it takes random. Well, actually, let's, let's see how it generates a stream key. 
it uses LRAN pseudobytes. So there could have been a vulnerability in this ransomware where maybe they don't use random information for the keys, or maybe they, you know, they don't seed their RNG properly. Maybe they seed it with a static number. Um, but the fact that they're using the open SSL pseudo RNG means it's likely cryptographically secure, right? So I guess to confirm our assumptions about how this thing is working, let's go through to the G the decrypt malware, the decrypt piece. Again, that is the, the binary that the victim is given and see what it does. In theory, it should do this in the exact opposite order, right? You should give it a private key as input. It should pull the encrypted stream key off the end and then use that stream key to decrypt your files. Let's go ahead and import that to Ghidra and see if we are correct. Guys, I'm, I'm a freak out. <laughs> I can't. Look at this shit. All right. Okay, so after fighting with 64 point font Ghidra, uh, we are in the main function of the decrypt binary. So again, this is a binary that the victim is likely given to decrypt their malware or to decrypt their files. Um, yeah, so you are, you instead of giving it a public key, you give it now the private key that you bought from the ransomware author and you point it at the file you would like to decrypt. Something, something, something. So get PK data. This should now be open up a, well, first we're just gonna open the file. But then we're going to create an RSA object with RSA private key. Yes, exactly. So RSA, you have a key pair and the one that you want to sell or you're for a ransomware author, you want to give to your victim is the private key. It's the one that you only have one copy of. You don't distribute that freely because it's private. All right, so we read in that private key, we create the object. And now this is the part where we actually decrypt our file. So again, what it should do is it should extract the encryption key, right? Which is done, right? So it takes the RSA object as input. And then what this function does is it says, what is the size of a thing encrypted by this key, right? What that's gonna do is it's going to look at the end of the file and probably extract the encrypted key blob. And then yes, you RSA decrypt that key blob and then you cut that key off the end of the file, you truncate it and then you, you encrypt. And again, it's a symmetric, symmetric key. So you, it could just be, it's the same algorithm. You use the same key that you've now decrypted and you close it. And then there, you have your file back, ta-da. So there we go. Um, pretty simple malware, honestly. The fact that they did a good job of like not compromising their encryption scheme with like decent cryptography, but like left their binaries with fucking symbols is insane to me, um, but so be it. Anyway, guys, I do these videos all the time. I'm getting more into cybersecurity as the channel goes on. So if you like this video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and then go watch this video right here about a thing I did with a thing. It's really cool. Go beep, go, go click it.